What is the difference between an alpaca and a llama? No clue, but if you're here looking for that information, you're on the wrong YouTube channel. Farmersonly.com is that way. But if you want to find out how fast a 1648 John boat will go with different size mud motors, then you are in the right place. In this video, we're going to be speed testing three different size long tail mud motors. We're going to start out with a 212 Predator, which is a six and a half horsepower, a 420 Predator, which is a 13 horsepower, and the 670 V twin Predator motor, which is a 22 horsepower. Send it. Our test subject for today is going to be my 1648 John boat. Let's go over all of the details that I know that you guys are going to ask down in the comments section. I'll just go ahead and get them out of the way right from the get-go, and then we'll move on to the testing. This boat is a 1979 Low Industries aluminum John boat. I do not know what the thickness is of the aluminum on the bottom or the sides, but it is 16 foot long and it is 48 inches wide at the bottom. Now, I've done a lot of work and modification to this boat. I've got a list of everything right here that I have added, and I will go through all of the weights and then give you the total weight approximately of what this boat is right now. Up on the front of the boat, we've got a bow mount trolling motor. It is a Minn Kota 45 pound thrust coming in at about 45 pounds. I have two group 29 batteries that are 58 pounds each, so about 116 pounds there. I have a lawnmower battery, I believe is a U1 size coming in at about 17 pounds for starting the uh, electric start mud motors. I've got a six gallon plastic gas tank on this boat with a full six gallons in it. It should come in at around 30 pounds. All of my framing and decking in the boat is aluminum. We got 16th inch angle, 8th inch angle, some square tube, 090 sheet aluminum, and 050 sheet aluminum, along with six sheets of turf coming in at about 250 pounds. And then I have a steel front bumper with lights on the front, and then a steel reinforcement for the rear coming in at about 75 pounds. And then I also have two beaver tail float pods on the back. I'm not sure what the weight is, but I'm not going to include that in the overall weight. With the big 670 Predator motor, which is the one that I normally run on this boat, you're looking at 110 pounds for the motor by itself, and then the long tail kit weighs about 75 pounds. So overall, we've got about 725 pounds of stuff that I have added into this boat. So the speeds in the test that you're going to see today are worst case scenario. This boat is loaded to the max. There's probably some other heavy stuff in that boat that I have left out and just not thinking of right off the top of my head. But when you take that 725 pounds that I've added to this boat, put me in it at 240 pounds and then like a 180 pound person, you're floating around like 1145 pounds of stuff in this boat. Now before any of you ex-Coast Guard Ranger, Green Jean, you know, Game Warden dudes go down in the comments section and lose your mind, I have no clue what the weight capacity of this boat is. It was built in 1979 and when I bought it, there was no capacity sticker on it. It only had the hull ID number or the VIN number for the boat and that is it. Looking at newer model John boats of this similar size, I'm finding weights online anywhere between like 800 and 1,000 pounds. So more than likely with me and one person in this boat, it is overweight. And with the addition of the pods on the back, it does help display some of that weight, but the boat rides just fine. It doesn't even come up all the way to that little center rib that runs down the side of the boat. Not going to sink it. It's going to be okay. The sky is not falling. For all of you that are not in the comment section right now freaking out about how my boat is overweight, all of the rest of you are probably wondering what kind of turf do I have and where did I get the framing kit and how did I do this and how did I do that? Guess what? I got a video on all of it. This entire boat build has been filmed from beginning to end from the day that it rolled up here at my house to where we are right now. I've got a link to the entire playlist I will leave right up here. You can go check it out and see every single little thing that I have done to this boat. But with all that being said, just keep in mind this boat is really, really heavy. If you have a regular 1648 John boat that's not built out like this one, your speeds are probably going to be a lot better than what you're going to see today. So I'm not going to be mentioning shaft length or prop sizes for any of these tests because your boat's going to be different than mine. It's really going to depend on how much weight you have in it, the shape of your boat, what kind of hull you have. So I'm just not going to talk about it. I will leave a little thing down at the bottom of every one of the test videos so you can see exactly what I was running, but I'm not going to really talk about it in the test videos. With all that out of the way, let's get to the test. So first up is going to be the Predator 212, six and a half horsepower from Harbor Freight coupled with a Beaver Dam Mud Runners long tail kit. 
Riding in the boat by myself, I was able to hit a top speed of 8.8, .8, but my average cruising speed was right around like 7.98 miles an hour. So we'll say the low eights for a solo run. And with a 180 pound passenger having two people in the boat, I was able to get a max speed of a whopping 7.7 .7 miles an hour and an average cruising speed of around seven. Not exactly ideal, but it'll get you where you need to go. Just gonna take a while, like a long time. Maybe by the time you get back, gas prices will be back down again. Next up, we have the 420 Predator, which is the 13 horsepower Harbor Freight motor, and it is also coupled with a large size Beaver Dam Mud Runners kit. By myself, I maxed out at a top speed of 15.6 miles an hour, but my average cruising speed was around 14.7. With the addition of a 180 pound passenger, now two people in the boat, brought my top speed down to 12.6 miles an hour and an overall cruising average speed of around 11 miles an hour. Definitely not going to break any land speed records with the 13 horsepower motor but it will get you where you need to go and it's got enough power to push that boat through just about anything you need to now you got to remember these are bone stock motors right out of the box from harbor freight no modifications done to them at all so there's definitely some more power and speed to be had and you could also just run these on a lighter boat and probably get much better performance than i did all right mr unicorn what's up next on the test list and last but not least we've got the 670 predator motor from harbor freight now, this motor does have a little bit of modification to it. It's got an exhaust, a Makuni 34 millimeter carburetor, and I had to do those upgrades because the original parts on this motor gave me a lot of problems. But with the modified 670 Predator 22 horsepower motor and a large Beaver Dam Mud Runners kit, I was able to get a solo top speed of 22 miles an hour with an average cruising speed with just me in the boat of about 20. And adding a 180 pound passenger, my top speed dropped down to 19 miles an hour and my average cruising speed was between 17 and 18. The one mile an hour range of cruising speeds is because it really depended on where the second person was sitting. You could move them around in the boat a little bit and pick up a mile an hour. And then if they moved a little bit in the other direction, you would lose a mile an hour. And that's why weight distribution is so important when you're setting up your long tail. You can move some things around, move some weight front, back, kind of in the middle and get it to level out to where you get the best average cruising speed. So with all that testing out of the way, what can we take away from this? Well, the six and a half horsepower motor is just not ever going to be enough to really get you anywhere on a 1648. I don't care how light you make it. The 13 is going to be kind of your entry level in the 16 foot range. I wouldn't go any lower than that, but it can definitely handle the power and weight of a 22 horsepower or bigger motor. I can also tell you that I ran this boat completely bare when I first built it. All I had done is just painted it and I had taken the bench seats out. And by myself, I was running in the upper 20s. I think my top speed I clocked was like 27.5 miles an hour. And that was with a 670 Predator motor bone stock. That was when it was still running. I had the original carb on it, no exhaust, no nothing. So I really think with a, you know, really, really light 1648 boat with a real open layout, not a whole lot of weight inside the boat, and a 670 Predator motor with some modifications, I think that 28, maybe 30 miles an hour is definitely possible. You really just got to take your time and dial in that mud motor, get your weight distribution right, and find a prop size that that motor likes on your particular boat. Ascendant John Boat's video would not be complete without some time in the haters corner. I've got my hater aid, so here we go. If you're not familiar with the Haters Corner, what we like to do at the end of every video is stand in a corner and see who was the most butt hurt in the comments over the last few weeks. And because we know that people are super sensitive on the interwebs, we don't use their real names, we just call them Scooter. Our first Scooter commented over on the 5 Day Boat Build video, he writes, The only way to make the smaller drain plug fit is to use Flex Seal to put your tractor tires on your Honda Civic. Scooter, did you know that light travels faster than sound and that's why you seem so bright until you spoke? <laughs> you you would think after doing so many of these and reading all of the comments that I get that nothing would shock me. But I promise you, tomorrow night I'm going to be standing in the shower going, Why would you put tractor tires on a Honda Civic? But that does sound kind of cool. The next Scooter commented over on my framing video where I framed out the 16-foot boat that we worked on today. Scooter writes, 0 .050 is a metric measurement, bud. Just saying. It made me laugh, though. Well, giggle, giggle, ha, ha, joke's on you, Scooter. 050 is not a metric measurement at all. It's 50,000th of an inch. All of my machinists and gunsmiths and folks that use little small measurements like that, get him down in the comments section right now. Get him. Ooh, buddy, they're going to tear you up in the comments, Scooter, but... With that being said, Scooter, you are a gray sprinkle on a rainbow cupcake. Just saying. 
Our next scooter commented on the same video. He said, hey, go take welding classes. Rivets don't last long. You did a good job. Duh. 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 I think he was trying to say though. Hey, Scooter, why don't you go take some English classes? And oh, buddy, they gonna get you in the comments too, Scooter, about them rivets. Man, everything is held together with rivets. Airplanes, AK-47, submarines, everything. I don't know why everybody thinks that you just have to weld a John boat frame together. Yeah, it's nice if you can do that, but if rivets will work on the 747 at the airport, they'll work just fine in my little John boat. But Scooter, whoever told you that in life you should always be yourself, he gave you terrible advice. Our next Scooter commented over on the turf video where I put the turf in my boat. Scooter writes, I tried to pay attention during your Scooter segment, but whatever the f*** you have growing on your face required all of my faculties. I reckon you spend more time coping that sack hammock than you ever have in a boat. Anyone who straightens their facial hair is at the very least the balls on a chin world champion. You know what else helps besides bacon? Not conditioning your facial hair. Wow, that was a lot of hate all in one comment. Hmm, well, Scooter, I don't hate you back. But if you were drowning, I would give you a high five. And you know, me and my personality and my beard styles are not for everyone. I'm kind of an acquired taste. And if you don't like it, just go acquire some taste. Our next scooter commented over on the uh, boat build video, the 16 foot video. He writes, oh, I got to zoom in on this one. This is good. I like your sign in the background, that LSU Fighting Tigers, the Eye of the Tiger called Baton Rouge, Louisiana, not too far where I used to live in Baton Rouge for over there on Rogers Court, then moved to Denham Springs, Louisiana by Freeport or, or Park Benson over there and live in Paris by Newcastle or White Castle. The old bridge across the Mississippi River had the train stop, the train railroad bridge break between them and the new Mississippi Bridge over Community Coffee. You can smell that coffee down below when you drive across coming and going to Palomique or going to Baton Rouge. Now, I was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but holy cow, Scooter, I have questions. Could you imagine if that's the way he types, how he talks? Who, buddy, I'd put that on a cracker. So our next Scooter was apparently a late night TV preacher. He wrote, John 3.3, 3, John 3.16, John 3.17, John 15.18, Romans 10.9, Ephesians 5.4 in the Bible. Not sure if he's trying to tell me that I need Jesus or if this is some kind of cryptic message. Let's just pick a random one and see what it is. Let's see, John 15.18 says, If the world hates you, keep in mind that the world has hated me before it hated you. Hmm, that's funny. Google left out the rest of that sentence, which is comma. We should definitely give the haters some love at the end of every single one of the videos because it's just awesome. Let's pull up another one. We've got Ephesians 5.4, and it says, Nor filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not befitting, but rather giving of thanks. Well, let's just be thankful that Scooter didn't leave any more Bible verses for me to look up because I definitely went to Sunday school as a kid. I just spent all my time thinking about how fast I could be in a John boat right now if I wasn't in Sunday school. Let's also give thanks to honorable mention of the week. Scooter writes, went to jump a dam this morning and all I could hear in my head was send it. <laughs> yee yee, buddy. Ah, that's awesome. But thank you guys very much for all of the nice comments that we do get. I love interacting with you guys. Feel free to comment, leave anything down in the comment section that you want. I do read every single one of them. But for all the haters, trolls, and scooters, I hope that you guys find someone to give you a hug soon because you, you probably need it. So what is up next for Send It John Boat? So Project Bottomland Bateau is not nearly anywhere close to being complete yet. I gotta figure out a way to lighten that bad boy up just a little bit so I can get all my bow fishing gear on there because we're gonna be doing some bow fishing this summer. But more importantly, I have yet to reveal the motor that is gonna be going on that boat. And for good reason, because it's something you guys have never seen before. Now that we have a baseline speed measurement for all of the regular mud motors in stock form, we may hop a few of them up, but that's not what's gonna wind up on this boat. The motor that's going on this boat, you're going to have to wait and see because you've never seen anything like it before. Other projects on the list, we've got Pocket Rocket, which is going to get welded up soon. We're going to extend the pods forward and test that out and see if we can get all of the 
issues on that little boat figured out. We've got to get started on Project Gravedigger at some point. Now that the weather's warming up, that will probably be coming soon. Now, if you're not following me over on the Tin Can Crew channel, you should definitely head over there and hit that subscribe button. Over there, I'm working on a project motor and I'm getting a lot of input from people and it's more of an interactive type thing. And for this first one over on the Tin Can Crew channel, we are making a short tail out of a long tail gonna be a pretty cool project and I can't wait to get it done. We will be back uploading videos on that channel here very soon. But the insanity and stupidity doesn't stop there. I've got more really really not smart stuff I want to do with John Boats and Mud Motors. But you're gonna have to wait for another video to see that. Now before I let you go let's take a moment and always remember money can't buy you happiness but it can buy you a boat. And it can also buy you like 1,100 pounds worth of crap to stick in a 1648 John boat. And it'll be overweight and people will complain about it online. Just like they're going to in the comments of this video. <laughs> Bye, guys.